Right. Well, that's enough of that, I think. <laughs> no reasonable able point is there. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. Merry, stupid, rotten, horrible, pathetic, sad, sad, stuff your face. Let's all think about the poor for five minutes and kick back a fifth of Scotch Christmas. <laughs> I could weep for joy. All I can think of is mother passing out my gravy. That was the year St. Gord fathered the gun, I think. Yeah. I got a lovely suitcase that year. <laughs> Surprised she didn't buy me a ticket somewhere. But that would have implied a direction on her part. I don't think she wanted me to actually go anywhere in particular. She just wanted me to go. It was a very, uh, very appropriate gift, really. <laughs> Ordinarily, she didn't bother. <clears throat> Usually it was me running around the house decorating in my red velvet shorts, <laughs> wrapping presents for everybody. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Imagine, I thought I could make us into a family, you know? Imagine I had to stuff my own stocking on Christmas Eve. Of course, I always knew there was no Santa Claus. Father told me that. Believe me, there is no better way to destroy the magic of childhood than to have a father who's a failed magician. <laughs> Especially a man of depressive one. Between the two of them, they destroyed every illusion I ever had. And for that, I'm grateful, actually. I am, really. I mean, imagine what a disappointment life would have been otherwise. Still, it might have been nice if I had been spared the truth a little while longer. Perhaps if Father hadn't sat next to me during that entire Lassie movie, whispering in my ear, the dog trainer is just outside the shop. <laughs> and where were you during all these important developmental moments? <laughs> Often some mad adventure, no doubt. Never a present of any kind. Some money in an envelope. Some ugly little seashell lamp. Some cheap cologne. Anything. All I ever wanted was a sign, you know? Some sense in the air that somebody was thinking about me. <laughs> oh. How, how thoughtful. Just what I always wanted. All those years ago. <laughs> Do we bury those years in the back, Auntie? No. No, they're ghosts. Ghosts. Haven't you ever seen a Swedish art film? No. <laughs> Everything that never happened between us never happened. A and I'm sorry, but there's no changing that with some, I'm sorry, poorly wrapped offering. Oh, I see. All right. Now comes, now comes, uh, you know, redemption. I see. <laughs> Forgive me. I thought there was no such thing as salvation. Now I find in the final minutes one can be redeemed with meager half gestures and long-faced apologies. This is why people are such unconscionable sinners their entire lives. Because they think that in the end they can make themselves into saints. What is it? Don't tell me. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely little... Thing of some kind. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'll just leave it wrapped, if that's all right. Oh, Why ruin Christmas by opening the presents? <laughs> and besides, I, I didn't get you anything. I'm sorry. They couldn't engrave the marble in time. <laughs> Look, Andy, they're all celebrating the start of a new year. Woo! <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine? Another whole year. They should be mourning like the rest of us. Oh, uh, I'm sure they've all made their resolutions to be better in the new year. <laughs> Wipe the slate clean and start again. I wonder what she's decided. And what about you, madam? What heartfelt and instantly forgotten resolution have you made for the new year? <laughs> yes. I think you should take it easy next year. Yeah, not put yourself out quite so much. <laughs> oh, hey, there's a man with a little leg down there. My God, I think he's pissed. <laughs> Hey, you! Yeah, hey! <laughs> I 
What are you doing there? Kicking up a heel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, what? Why shouldn't anybody promise themselves to be a better person? They might as well promise themselves to be a taller person. <laughs> How does anybody actually change, anyway? I mean, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Aside from mm, chopping off your head and sticking it on backwards, I mean, what are the options? <laughs> I think I'll change my hair color next year. I mean, if I can't be a better person, I think I'll be a blonde. <laughs> oh, and of course, I vow to be a better nephew. Oh. Oh. No more of this wishing you had just dropped dead. <laughs> no more of this wondering, my God, when is she going to kick the bucket? <laughs> no, no. No more wishing. <laughs> <laughs> no more wondering. <laughs> I made you a special pudding, Auntie. <laughs> oh, Auntie, why aren't you eating your butterscotch there? something wrong with it. Yeah. What? What are you accusing me of? I, I told you I read things far too quickly to understand them. <laughs> Instant pudding. Looks a lot like uh, ant poison when you string it all together like that. <laughs> <laughs> say this, Auntie. I mean, it may seem a little like impatience on my part. I mean, I'm not thinking about the year past. I'm thinking about the years ahead. You don't seem to be on a very tight schedule. <laughs> and this is not how I envision spending the rest of my life. I mean, I don't know how I envision spending the rest of my life, but I'm quite certain you were not part of the plan. So, I made up my mind. It's the police. <laughs> Don't worry. They didn't suspect a thing. I was very natural. <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't think they noticed, do you? Ah, why would they? They weren't after me anyway. They were asking about that woman across the street. Yeah. They wanted to know if we knew anything about her. Well, I said she's a neighbor. Of course we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she's dead. Imagine. Apparently she's been dead for a very long time. <laughs> Poor woman. No wonder she looked like a corpse. <laughs> they said she was holding a faded photograph in her hand. How sad. Some picture of a little boy with a mumps or something. Eh, probably some relative, you know, who couldn't be bothered to. <laughs> I just had the most awful, sickening feeling that I was in the wrong house. Oh! <laughs> but that would mean the two of us weren't actually related. 
Well, not to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even get her in the back of that station wagon. Wow. Yeah, propping her up in the back seat. God, I've never seen rigor mortis like that. Mm. Oh, this is awful. Well, there really isn't much to say now. That wouldn't be an understatement. I mean, the idea that you and my aunt was unbearable. The fact that you're not. It's unforgivable. What was I thinking? Where have I been? What have I been doing? It's the wrong address. When am I going to learn to pay attention? Pay attention. I have been nowhere, looking after no one, feeding you pudding, keeping you alive. For what? If I didn't think that you could charge me with false pretenses, I would charge you with fraud. Why didn't you just stick a barbecue fork in my head? Isn't my life stupid and pointless enough without you underlining it in a red pencil? Why didn't you say something? I was glad of a visit. <laughs> visit? This was a hostage taking. <laughs> you trapped me here for a year and blindfolded me to the truth. I understand the desperation there is in loneliness. But I think if someone is so keen to have the company of others, I think a home of some kind would be more suitable. Wouldn't you be happier here? Why are you lying here in the dirt? It's the middle of the night! Oh, yeah. So it is. Ooh. I was sitting outside, you know, on my suitcase, and I was wondering why I was sitting outside on my suitcase. I came back to say goodbye. I mean, I owe you that much at least. 
After all those things I said and did, they were really pretty awful. But then I thought you were a relative. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I could go back to the bank, but I don't think I'm part of the fiduciary trust anymore, you might say. You see, uh, when I got that letter, I went right to the manager, and I, I said to him, my aunt is dying. I need a couple of days off. Well, a couple of years would have been more precise, but never mind. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He didn't even look up from his work. He just, he just said, I'm afraid it's bad timing. Mm -hmm. Well, he was always saying things like that, you know, so I didn't give it a second thought. I just headed on back downstairs. You know, when you start working at the bank, they like to make you feel part of a family. They even sent me a card on my birthday. Wrong day, of course, you know, but still, a card. Imagine. Best wishes from your savings and loan family. I, I was moved, really. I mean, I was a, a part of something. Imagine. Yeah. Well, you know, when I got down to that bottom step, I... I just kind of sat down, and yeah, my hand still clinging to the railing. Yeah, I just sat in, in a thick-headed fog, and I could see my desk over there, without me in it. And I suddenly realized what bad timing my death would be for the bank. Not tragic, not sad, just inopportune. <laughs> no, I thought. No. When I go, I want to make them feel a profound loss of something. It's not very nice to feel unwanted. Oh, I would have been wanted, all right. There's no question about that. Unfortunately, though, I uh, left in such a hurry, I absconded with the suitcase before I put the money in it. <laughs> Does that surprise you, Auntie? Someone must be looking out for you, dear. <laughs> no. Nobody's looking out for anybody anymore. You know, I, I was sitting out there and looking up at this place, thinking how lonely it looked in the lamplight. And then I thought to myself, you're a constipated old woman. I mean, you so much as sneeze and they're stoked in the crematorium fires. I mean, that's the way people think nowadays. Where is the sense of obligation? You see some old geezer on the bus, and you think, my God, he's taking up a perfectly useful seat. <laughs> some old doll fishing through her change purse. All these wrinkled and forgotten souls. Who's going to bring them their puddings? Some fat, odious, sneering nurse with a hypodermic needle? Some snub-nosed lawyer with a buyback mortgage scheme? <laughs> Where is the sense of compassion gone in this world? I mean, who considers you an obligation? I think I'd rather be an amorous. <laughs> no, no. In a better world, there'd be somebody here at your side. There is. Hey, you know, I was thinking, I could be mayor arrested for criminal negligence. Do you think that there's a law against letting your own aunt sit and rot in a chair for a year while you mock her from across the street? <laughs> and if there isn't, don't you think there should be? <laughs> and maybe they'll include my time here as part of my sentence. <laughs> Go fish. Uh, let's see what you got there. And, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Oh, just what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> I win again. Uh, what's the matter with you? You seem very negative these last few days. How about another round? Okay, maybe not. I don't know what you want. Are you sure you don't want me to take you to the park? I, I, I could show you the man with a wooden leg. 
He's a bit of a nut, but he, he's quite harmless. <laughs> he, he said he, he stepped on a landmine. Did you know that? Not in the park. <laughs> in a war. Some war. I don't know which one. <laughs> he said he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I said, I know how you feel. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've never lost a leg or anything, but, you know, we're all kind of hobbling around, missing bits and pieces of ourselves, aren't we? You know what he told me? He said that when he first lost the leg, he had to be convinced it was really gone. He kept wanting to reach down and scratch his foot. Isn't that something? Huh. He says even today, he occasionally feels a tingling sensation down there. How ironic. I don't feel any attachment to my legs at all. <laughs> Do you think that when we're gone, there's a sense of us missing in the air somewhere? A sort of a Tingling sensation? Oh my goodness! Oh, that frightened me. Why did you touch me? Oh, I see. Affection. Lovely. Fortunately, one doesn't receive it very often. I never quite know what an appropriate reciprocal gesture would be. Would $20 be too much? The sweater! It's for you. This? Well, you didn't have to do that. Oh, I look. It's got little sleeves and everything. pushing you down some Mediterranean promenade. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. How do you say pudding in Spanish? <laughs> Never mind. I get to get to France. I can order better there. What do you think? Would you like to go to France? I think that's a fantastic oh, idea. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> but will you excuse me, please? <gasps> what? Excuse you? <laughs> oh, no, 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 madam. You are not excused. <laughs> we are going whether you want to or not. I am packing us in the back of that taxi, and we are gone. Mon Dieu, I haven't been so excited. I mean, I've never been anywhere except back and forth across this stupid country. I see. Well, in that case, you're excused. No. No. No, 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 no! You are not excused. You are not excused. We have other plans. Other plans, madam. I'm gonna buy myself a white linen suit and white penny loafers. Oh, in France, I, I guess they'd be Santine loafers. <laughs> and I'll introduce you to everyone as my aunt, if that's all right with you. I mean, you really should be anyway. A, and besides, I like you. In my own way. I hope that doesn't embarrass you to hear that. It embarrasses me to say it, but it's true. I like you. You should have been my aunt all along. I think it's right that I came here in the first place. And besides, she wouldn't be much of a traveling companion now, would she? But you and me, we can make up for that, for all of it. Forget the butterscotch, yeah? From now on, it's creme caramel. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's, it's not excuse me, it's excusez-moi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a how do you say suppositories in French? <laughs> ah, never mind. I'll pack you some. Yeah, yeah. 
Excuse you. <laughs> what kind of manners are these, madam? Dropping off stupidly in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's too fucking small! just like all the rest. You leave just like all the rest. Why couldn't we all just go at the same times? Then we wouldn't have to watch each other die. Je ne suis qu'une fille du bord, une ombre de la vie. 